first and foremost, you need to be more interested than interesting. You need to take advantage of all opportunities within your internship by going the extra mile, asking more questions, learning the most that you can learn with the time that you have. You need to figure out how to distinguish yourself and gather as much situational knowledge as you can. So ask questions of all the individuals that are at your internship, whether they're your boss, other people within the organization, your associate peers, other interns. The more questions you ask and the more that you learn, the more successful of an intern that you'll be. Because two things will happen. The number one asset that you'll gain is situational knowledge. The second asset that you'll gain is the relationship capital of all of those people working with you. You need to remind yourself that you need to be more interested than interesting. The second thing I encourage you to do to be a successful intern is to over communicate. Communication is the effective tool to create a shared vision and help you become a successful intern. Now, when I talk about over communication, I'm not talking about you talking a lot. Actually, I'm talking about you looking and being an effective communicator. Remember, it's not what you say, it's what they hear. We should be over communicating any questions or, or uncertainties that we have, what we're doing, how we're doing it, when we're gonna be somewhere, if we're late, if we're on time, anywhere we have a chance to utilize all these wonderful tools and mediums that we have of communication. Communication is the most valuable tool to help you become a successful intern, as well as a successful, fulfilled individual in all of your relationships. Number three, live above the line in accountability. You are the only common denominator in your life. You need to take responsibility and accountability for everything that you do, good or bad. I promise you, all of your superiors expect you as an intern to make mistakes. But they're, what they're looking at is how you respond or react to the mistakes that you're making. And one of the number, thing, number one things that they're looking for is whether you take accountability or you fall below the line into blame, shame, and justification. You will be empowered if you take accountability and responsibility for all that you do. Set yourself apart, be a successful intern, and distinguish yourself as a responsible, accountable member of the team. And don't be afraid to pay the dummy tax. You're expected to make these mistakes. Not only should you be making the mistakes, but you should be asking everyone around you about the same mistakes that they've made in the same circumstances and try to leverage their dummy tax before you have to, to make those mistakes yourself. That helps you gain as much situational knowledge as you can in the quickest and most efficient amount of time. It's okay to take yourself out of your comfort zone, into your learning zone, and challenge yourself and I know if you're challenging yourself, you're going to make mistakes. Not only do you have to be accountable for those mistakes, but you also have to learn from those mistakes. We don't want to make mistakes twice. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. You need to be more interested than interesting, over communicate, live above the line and pay your own dummy tax and learn from others dummy tasks and you'll be very, very successful as an intern. The next way to be successful as an intern is to truly understand time. Now, time is so difficult, especially when you're, we're young, to understand the conflict between being eager and doing everything that we can, but yet being patient enough to wait for what we're trying to manifest. And this conflict charges and changes and creates all types of anxiety in young people. From all the thousands of interns I had, this may be the most challenging of all, is understanding time. I either find that individuals or interns are too patient and laid back, and it carries through on both. Yeah, they're willing to wait for what they want, but they're not 
working hard and eager and trying to get it. Or more commonly, I have these great, eager, hardworking interns that are not patient enough to let the universe work as it does and manifest what they want rapidly and accurately. They don't have perspective on time. I'll give you an example. I had a young woman, very successful, come into my office for some advice. She had been working for two years, uh, 18 months, been out of school two years. And she asked me, she said, I'm working so hard. I really am enjoying what I'm learning. I'm learning so much. I have all this great situational knowledge, as well as I'm building my relationship capital and the black book of network people that can help me. But I haven't been able to achieve or manifest what I desire. Now, in her perspective, she's been out of school two years working. And since then, 18 months seems to be about 75% of her entire career. So her perspective and patience is very difficult to have because if you were working for something for 75% of your entire career, it would seem like a long time. Now, for me, as old as I am in the years and years and decades of experience, 18 months is like a blink of an eye. And so I have the perspective to have much more patience when I'm working eagerly to manifest what I want rapidly and accurately to allow the right place, people, and time to happen by itself by getting out of my own way and attracting what I want, which is to be an extremely successful intern. Now, the next point in being a successful intern is interesting. I have a saying, you're never as good as they say you are and you're never as bad. We cannot have a need for accolades or reputation or worry of others. No one else can define us. We are the common denominator in our life. We are the only ones that know what we're capable of. And so we must look and not listen only to the negative haters in the world who tell us you can't do this, you won't do that, but also the people who think too highly of us like maybe our parents or our grandparents that don't have anything constructive to add and only elevate our stature and status and expectations far beyond reality. You must always remember you're never as good as they say you are, but especially you're never as bad. Now, one other key piece of advice to be a successful intern is very simple. I have a philosophy that everyone, whether you're a morning person or a night person, is more productive in the morning. Let me tell you why. When you wake up in the morning, your mind is a tabula rasa, a clear slate. You have a reset button every morning to manifest what you want more accurately and rapidly and attract what you want into your life. The analogy that I use is imagine your day is like those big, tall San Francisco hills where your life is this car on top of the hill. Well, in the morning, with one hand, I can hold the car at the top of the hill. But at the end of the day, if I try to stop that car as it's been flying down the hill, I'm going to get run over. Now, you need to create positive energy and momentum at the beginning of the day where you're most productive that will carry through through the entire day. It's my personal opinion. It's too late to do it at 11 or 12 o'clock at night. So utilize your tabula rasa and your clear mind to build momentum during the day to be a successful intern. The next piece of advice is simple and also has breath to it. It's pick up the phone. So in a narrow sense, you need to not communicate via text and email all the time and not be afraid to have humor, human interaction. The problem with text and email is when you text an email, there's no differentiator, there's no adoption, there's no adjustment, there's no explanation of context, tone, or, or, or anything to do with what we're trying or how we're trying to communicate. So many interns today think that the efficiency of utilizing email and text overcomes the value of personal interaction. In order to be a successful intern and distinguish yourself, you need to pick up the phone and talk to people. Sometimes I'm amazed that it's much more efficient to pick up the phone in three minutes and have an entire conversation than dredge through 180 character text while they're driving, let alone the dangers of utilizing text in a car. 
So make sure that you know that you need to pick up the phone and interact with people, whether it's internally at the company or externally with other clients or associates, partners, etc. The next piece of advice is to follow office decorum and culture. It's great to be an individual, but you also must be a team member. Don't dress for the job that you have currently, dress for the one that you want within the decorum and culture of the company. You want to make sure that you're continuing to add value or appreciate what the company has built before you. Not to say you can't have individual touches to what you do, how you dress, how you act, but you want to work within the context of that decorum and culture and appreciate it and add value to it. Continue to improve upon and progress that culture and decorum. So many times I think people mistake being an individual and become a distraction or disappointment to their superiors by not understanding that they work for a team within an organization with a shared vision, not just an individual vision. The next one is also related uh, to tweeting and texting. You need to read more in order to be a successful intern. Texting and tweeting is great, but you need to read more. Read more books, read more articles. There's so much access today to information. There's all types of things that you can find and read. Read my book, Warren's book, the training that we have. Whatever you need to do, keep on learning, gaining the situational knowledge that you need in order to accelerate your growth to be a successful successful intern. Spending your time tweeting and texting is not being more interested than interesting. The more that you read, the more that you know, and knowledge is power. Our mental waves vibrate faster than anything else in this universe. So we wanna increase our mental power and our knowledge, and one of the best ways to do that is to read. Also remember, to be a successful intern, No job is beneath you. I always refer back to Martin Luther King who said, if you're going to be a street sweeper, be the best street sweeper you can. No job is beneath you. What your superiors, decision makers, power sponsors, bosses are looking for is to see how you interact and work with others. When they say jump, you say how high. You don't need to question whether getting their lunch or their laundry or other minimal tasks is a good use of your time because you're Ivy League educated and so well experienced and versed and can handle so much. What they're looking for is your attitude, not your aptitude. If they ask you to do something that you feel is beneath you, do it with vigor, eagerly and gratefully. It will distinguish you and allow them to understand the value of you, not only as an individual, but as a team member. It's very, very important to allow your ego to get out of your way. When we talk about your ego, you don't have a need to be right. You don't have a need to be offended. You don't have a need for accolades or a reputation. What you have a need to do is to connect to goodness and give the most value and appreciation to your opportunity as you can. That's how you become a successful intern. The next piece of advice on how to be a successful intern is probably the easiest one to do. It's to be the first one in and the last one to leave. In the sports industry, Most great athletes that have all the talent in the world, the best ones are the first ones in and the last to leave. It's a way to set yourself apart from all the others by having simple effort and engagement with the opportunity. Nothing tells the other people that work with you that you care that this means so much to you that you're focused, clear and balanced on what you want by being the first one in every day and the last one to leave. And when the time comes where decisions have to be made, 
made on who is going to be advanced within an organization or a company, believe it or not, one of the first things people look at is who's the first one there and the last to leave. Make that impression. Take the simple step to be early and to leave late. Next, don't wait to be told what to do. Don't wait to be told what to do. Too many interns trying to be successful are afraid to go out and think on their own, to get out of the comfort zone, out of their list, and make decisions on their own, to wait Every time to what, what your superiors or your manager wants you to do is not going to make you a success. Be proactive. Be more interested than interesting. Go out there. Find extra information. Do a little bit more. Find out a little bit more. Be proactive and look for what's coming up next. If somebody needs uh, has a habit, make sure, for example, if the coffee, uh, your boss has coffee, have it there without them asking. If Ask them what they, they need is another great way to do, to do more. So make sure that you're not waiting to be told every single thing that you need to be done. Think outside of the box. Be more ingenuitive. Be creative. And let them know that you can take charge and, empo- and you're empowered to be successful. That will distinguish you. You will make a difference. It also will allow you to learn more, have more situational knowledge, and meet more people. Which leads me to the next piece of advice. Especially in the sports world with sports inter- internships. People mean more than perks. Remember, That relationship capital is what's the most valuable thing along with the situational knowledge. And a lot of times, my young interns lose focus because there's so many perks in their internships, especially in in sports. They're more concerned about the tailgate party, the Playboy Mansion parties, the ESPY awards, all the different events, the TV shows, the interviews, when they should be concentrating on their relationships on the people internally at the organization and the people externally that we provide value of service and product to. They lose focus and get involved in all the perks and forget that people make the decision. Do not get caught in this trap. Make your decision on the internship that you want and continue to have in your future jobs by the people that you surround yourself with. Related to that is the piece of advice to speak up, not out. If you have constructive criticisms, comments, or concerns, you should be speaking up. Not only meaning to speak up in the fact that you should tell your superiors, but also in the direction. You should be telling your superiors of your ideas, constructive criticisms, comments, and concerns. The last thing that you want to do is speak out. This creates dissension. This creates negative energy. This also will be frowned upon when found out by your superior. It's related to being accountable. Lo and behold, you will find that if you speak up, more people will respect you. And most of the time, your advice, criticism, concerns, and questions will be taken in the positive way not a negative way if they hear it through the grapevine from the water cooler. Make sure that you speak up, not out. Next, I highly encourage you, in order to be a successful intern, to find three professional mentors. Now, don't just pick any three. Go out and find those mentors that have the skill sets, the experience, the desires that you want or have or want to improve upon. Find three professional mentors that are willing to give of their time to you. They're willing to answer the questions, emails, and texts. They're able to leverage the dummy tax that they've had. They're able to allow you to leverage the dummy tax that they've had so that you don't have to make the mistakes and you can accelerate your success as an intern. 
pick three mentors that can help you anytime, anywhere, and be proactive for asking for help from these people. And finally, the most important of all advice that I can give you on how to be a successful intern is desire. Do not quit. So many times as we go on our journey and we try to manifest what we want, we're so close. And it's usually right when we're so tired and we're about to give up that the universe is testing us. But in order to be a good bet of the universe, you need to bet on the universe. Trust it. Keep fighting. Have the perseverance. All the successful people that I know have had great challenges that they refused to quit on. They believed in themselves and they refused to quit. What I suggest as a next step is to look into the three-hour training here on internships.com that will move and look at the seven principles and four key elements for each of those principles to help you with and how to be the most successful intern, as well in life and business, the most successful being that you can be. All of these pieces of advice can be utilized in business and in life. And I think if you take the time to be more interested than interesting, and take the time to look at and learn from this training, you will be exponentially successful. You will raise the bar And you will be the most successful intern that you can be. Thank you so much.